YouTube! Welcome to day 23 of my birthday countdown vlog. 17 more days until I turn 40. So let's see, uh, when I was 17, uh, it was 1989, and I was, uh, started that year, I was a junior still in high school, and I was president of the computer club, I was president of the Doctor Who club, and you know, basically a geek. Um, I was also in the German club, and I believe I'd already started in the sign language club as well, so I, I did a lot of club activities. And um, one thing that happened was that the, uh, the guy that was my vice president for the Doctor Who club called me up one day and actually asked me to go to the Museum of Science and Industry with him, which had me all sorts of excited because a boy had never asked me... It, 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 I've never had a boy call me at home and ask me to go somewhere with him. So basically, in my mind, that was my first official date that I've ever done. And it was cool. We spent the entire day at the museum. I remember we went to see the U-505 uh, U-boat exhibit um, and a bunch of other things, um, the various exhibits that, that were going on at the time. And then he also uh, took me downtown, uh, Michigan Avenue, to, I believe it's the Tribune building. Um, there's a building down on Michigan Avenue where they have embedded in the walls, uh, exterior walls of the building, uh, different bits and pieces of other famous buildings, including um, pieces of the Berlin Wall, the Great Wall of China, and just other various uh, famous structures from around the world, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and neither one of us had a car at the time, so we basically went everywhere by bus, and he, he went all the way back home with me uh, before uh, ending the date. Although, um, no kissing or anything happened on that date. But after that date, uh, we did have a couple other dates. We actually had a, a, an a official uh, movie and dinner date um, a couple weeks later. And one time he even invited me over to have dinner with his parents. Which was, I thought was kind of exciting. It's like, oh, he wants me to meet his parents. But then his parents weren't there. Uh, he had some excuse of, oh, sorry, they... Um, had an emergency thing out of town and uh, they had to leave this morning. Um, although in retrospect that seems a little bit suspicious. I guess, I'm guessing he knew about that ahead of time. Uh, he just wanted me to himself for the afternoon. And not that we did anything um, other than talk and hold hands and he played, um, I think he played the song Earth Angel and danced with me. Um, and, and I think that was, that was the first time he kissed me and stuff. Um, and, you know, I was all sorts of, um, Twitter-pated over all this, you know. There's a boy finally paying attention to me. I'm 17. Um, I've never been kissed before. I'd never gone on a date before. So it was all kind of neat and exciting. Uh, but then I knew that the junior prom was coming up pretty soon. And he was a senior, um, but I was wondering if he was going to take me to the junior prom or the senior prom or both. And he kind of hemmed and hawed and didn't want to talk about it and kind of beat around the bush about it. And so I started getting a little suspicious over everything and I started um, asking some questions of people I knew. And as soon as I, I said anything, they were like, you are going out with who? Uh, don't you know who his girlfriend is? And I'm like, wait a minute, I thought I was his girlfriend. And they were like, no, 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 he's going steady with her over there. And she was um, a high-ranking, um, one of the high-ranking students in the um, ROT, junior ROTC at our high school. And uh, they all said, nobody breaks up with her. Uh, not unless she wants them to. <laughs> and I immediately was very angry over the situation. I was like, wait a minute, he's been lying to me all this time. He's actually going steady with another girl and still dating me on the way. No. So I confronted him about it. Um, he gave me this sob story about how he was so scared of her and uh, he was afraid that she was going to come murder him in his sleep. She knew how to use guns, etc., etc. And I just looked at him like, I'm sorry, but... One, I do not date another woman's man. End of story. And two, um, I really dislike liars. Um, I, I value honesty above all else. And I will not tolerate lies, especially lies like that. And um, three, I don't like guys who are that freaking wishy-washy that they're afraid of a girl and afraid of breaking up with a girl. 
I don't care if she's in the junior ROTC or not. I'm sorry. You're just not my type of guy. So I ended it right there and then. Um, and, and what was really sad and pathetic is that summer, um, I, I was actually, I actually had a summer job that year, and he apparently came and hung out and spent time with my grandmother during the day while I was at work, um, sobbing and bemoaning the fact that I had dumped him and begging uh, my grandmother to get me to take him back. Um, which made me all the less attracted to him. Um, I, I'm, you know, that's just added um, added to the problems with with that situation. And I'm, I was like, yeah, absolutely not. I don't care how sweet and nice he's trying to be. And you know, it was nice that he was, you know, giving my grandmother a bit of company while while I was away at work. But I'm sorry, no, I I was not going back to that situation again. Um, but anyway, the job that I got um, was actually my godmother. Uh, she worked at this company. Um, oh, they were basically the Carpenters Union office, the headquarters office for the Carpenters Union in Chicago. And uh, she was working, I think, in their IT tour department. And she got me the summer job, uh, basically doing uh, just filing, stuffing envelopes, um, that kind of thing. I mean, it was super mundane, boring work, um, and the kind of work that I had eight hours in a day to work, and I could have probably done most of the work in the two-hour time frame. It, it was, it was, you know, that super easy to do, and it didn't take that long to do it. Um, but most people in that office. Um, had various things that they would do to take a two-hour task and stretch it out for the eight-hour day so that they would get paid for the whole day and not sit there looking like they're twiddling their thumbs. So I got really good at um, getting up every 15 minutes and getting a cup of tea from the uh, uh, little kitchen that they had or chit-chatting with somebody and asking a question or whatnot. So I learned how to stretch out my time. Um, and, you know, everybody at because I think we worked till 4.45 every day, and at four, like the, the second that the hand hit 4.45, everyone was already, you know, had their coats on, had their purses, you know, were ready, and boom, as soon as it hit, we were rushed for the tour. Um, it was, to me, it was a rather bizarre experience. Um, I have not ever worked in an office uh, like that before or since. Uh, where people were, were that, I mean, it was, it was boring work, and like I said, there was probably more people working there than there was work to do. And um, it was a union office, and you know, what, what can I say about that? Um, but, you know, it was the first time I actually made some money. I was making minimum wage at the time, which I don't remember if it was 385 or if it was up to 425 an hour yet at that point, but that's around what I was making. Um, and my godmother also helped me open up my first bank account, so I got a checking account and a savings account, and I was able to put away my money and cash my checks and everything, and so she was really helping me with my money management, because uh, she knew that my my mother and my grandmother both were very poor at that. So that was that was a good thing, that, that I would learn how to have a bank account and learn how to put money away and save it. Um, unfortunately, she didn't teach me how to manage my credit cards very <laughs> well which was my own problem later on. Um, and then uh, obviously at the end of all of that, at the end of that summer I went back to school, senior year, uh, went back uh, with all my different club activities. At this time the ex-boyfriend had graduated because like I said he was a senior so I didn't see him. But the interesting thing that happened was within like, the first week of senior year his steady girlfriend that I'd found out about uh, came up to me and said, you, me, lunchroom, fourth period or whatever. We happened to actually have the same period of lunch um, that, that year. And I was like, okay. So I went and, had, went and got my lunch. Um, when it came time and I sat down and she joined me and we talked. And she confronted me about the whole thing with her and, and her now ex because she, she found out about everything and she dumped him as well, so he finally got rid of her <laughs> indirectly through me. Um, and and she said, I want to hear your side of it. And I told her, look, 
I did not know that he was dating you. I did not know he was going steady with anybody. Um, I am not into gossiping with people, so I don't know all the gossip going on in school. I don't know who's dating who or what or why or when. And so I had no idea. And as soon as I found out, I, I dumped him immediately. I wanted nothing more to do with him, and I, I want nothing more to do with him even now. And so, um, you know, be that as it may, I, 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 I was honest with her. I says, look, I yes, we dated. You know, no, we didn't do anything. I mean, yeah, okay, fine, he kissed me, but um, nothing much beyond that. And I really um, was not comfortable dating him after I found out he was still dating someone else and that he was too scared to to leave her. So I'm like, you know, no. I'm not, no longer interested in him in any way, shape, or form. So that gave her uh, peace of mind uh, and, and on that front because um, I think they broke up but I think she wanted to get back together and so she wanted to know the situation there first or I don't know the whole deal. Um, but you know I really didn't care either. Um, so after that I kind of went on with my life and kept going to my clubs and taking my classes and um, that was that was that was a lot of fun with with German club and I, I started working on some of the dancing uh, we were going to do the international days which happened the next year and so I got to learn how to waltz um, as well as we also did the chicken dance and then there was another group that did some of the folk dancing but I was part of the the, the waltz group and so that was a lot of fun uh, we had a, one of the teachers who was our one of the math teachers actually taught the dancing. And um, unfortunately, I got stuck with a really bad partner, and he wasn't very good at leading. I kept having to pull him to get myself into the turns that I needed to do, which was rather sad. And I still remember there was one Saturday rehearsal where he never showed up, and this other guy's girlfriend, who was his partner, never showed up either. We neither one of us knew what happened, and nobody had cell phones to call people at the time to find out. You know, where are you? So we went ahead with re rehearsal without them, and I got paired up with the other guy whose girlfriend didn't show up. And he was an amazing partner. He was so good at leading me, and um, it, it just improved my dancing tremendously, having a good partner. And, and he said secretly, like, don't tell my girlfriend, but you're actually better than, she, than I am. Uh, than, you're better than she is, um, mainly because she was more of a dominant type of girlfriend and she wanted to lead. <laughs> she was trying to pull him into turns even though he was at, he was actually you know doing the right thing but he wasn't doing it to the timing that she thought he should so he was kind of she was kind of messing up his dancing a little bit so and of course I had you know Mr. Wishy-Washy so that didn't work either so unfortunately we we were not the <laughs> the best dancing group out there but we tried, and we had um, a total of, oh, I forget how many performances. We had one perform evening performance for the parents on the big stage, and then we had several performances over three days um, in the gym, because we had like this three-day event where all the groups got to dance. We had booths with local food that people could sample and everything else, because I think we had somewhere along the lines of 50 different international cultures represented at our high school. We were a magnet high school, so we had kids from all over the city come uh, and, and be students at our high school. So um, we, we had just this wonderful diversity in our school, and we celebrated that every year with a three-day event, which was amazing. And I always, I loved uh, International Days. It was one of my favorite things. And senior year was the, the one year I got to really participate in that and the very last performance, we decided to be a little bit rebellious. And we're seniors, we're graduating soon, we didn't care. And instead of being in my formal ball gown and heels, um, I ended up switching into um, just a t-shirt and shorts. And then um, I got um, a tux jacket and tie from my partner and so the, boy, the boys took off their tux jackets and ties, but kept their cover buns and everything else. And the boys put on Hawaiian skirts. They got the Hawaiian grass skirts from the Hawaiian club. 
And so there the boys are in the Hawaiian skirts, and here the girls are in the tux jackets and ties, and we're and we're waltzing. So um, and everyone just thought that was hilarious. Our teacher was a little upset with us, but she saw how much fun everyone was having with it, and how much fun the audience had with it, and how much they seemed to love it, and it really. Uh, encourage people when we did the German chicken dance to get everyone out on the on the floor to to participate. So in the end, she learned to laugh with us, and, and she was she was like, "Don't do that again." Oh, that's the last performance. Never mind. <laughs> so anyway, so 1989 was was a kind of a fun year for me. Um, ultimately, uh, despite the whole boyfriend thing, which um, you know, uh, for for a first time. Dating experience, it wasn't the best, but, yeah, well, it taught me um, to be a little bit more leery of boys and, and to be more picky about who I date, so in the end, it was a good lesson to learn. All right, well, till tomorrow. Bye.